And we welcome you to the south side of Chicago and guaranteed rate field. We've got a Thursday matinee on the show. It's the Houston Astros going up against the Chicago White Sox. John Chomby and, and Chris now, Singleton with you. Though both sides, this game really matters as the postseason is approaching. Well, at this point of the year, guys are a little bit tired, but you've got to find a way to dig deeper and bring out your best with so much opportunity to be able to punch your ticket for October. Just about set to go now, and starting this one is Michael Kopech. Yeah, he battled through seven innings last time out. He pitched well enough to get the win thanks to that offense. He'll look to turn in another quality start in this one. All right, ready to get underway. And stepping in for the Astros, number 56. The center fielder, number 56. The wind of the pitch. That misses the zone. And away we go this afternoon. First pitch, 111. Kicks and deals. See the velocity 97 with that fastball. Righty delivers. Good zip on that fastball at the bottom of the zone. If he's there all day, it's going to be a tough one for the hitters. Next pitch misses way outside. Right-hander kicks, deals. It weakly on the ground towards second. Garcia handles. Throw to first is in time. One out in the top of the first. Now we check out the Astros lineup. And no doubt a big factor in this series so far, Tyler O'Neill. Well, this club has started to lean on him. He's got 10 RBIs in his last 10 games. So this is a guy, when you need some momentum, got some runners on, you want him at the plate. He's been clutch. And he's been delivering big time. Now the youngster Juan Soto comes in working with the sixth best average in the AL. Nice warm day here. Good baseball weather. Does that change anything, Chris, especially for the hitters? Absolutely. You feel so much more comfortable at the plate. You're not worried about you know, getting jammed on fastballs inside part of the plate. Uh, you can kind of be more selective instead of just looking out away so that you can get the barrel to it in that part and get on the inside part of the plate as well. The shortstop, number 10. First offering in the dirt. Righty to the plate. Tap to first. And he grabs it foul. No score just getting started top of the first. Next offering is in the dirt. It's a bullet, but it goes foul. Two outs. Inside, and it hit him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. Well, that one might sting for a bit, but it helps the team, and it boosts the OBP boot. Sometimes that trade-off is worth it, but well, sometimes it's not. Stepping in, Diego Corona. Next pitch is outside. Good speed on the base pass. He handles the bat very well I wouldn't be surprised if the skipper puts on some type of hit and run or run and hit the 2-0 is in for a strike oh, 
A little bit low. Well, they're really running up the pitch count in this first inning. Lots of confidence from this team that is perhaps the hottest in baseball right now. Number 10 off of first with two away. Oh, now this one's high and deep. Way back there. On its way. Gone. A two-run shot is 42nd home run of the season. It's 2-0. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. So two down, and now it's going to be number 30. The first pitch. Number 30. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Ball one, no strike. And he deals. That misses the zone. Two balls, no strikes. The wind of the pitch. That one missed. Now three and oh. After giving up that home run earlier, it just doesn't seem like he wants to challenge him. Yeah. Next pitch in for a strike. Three and one. And he flips a breaking ball in there or a changeup. Either one. <laughs> Something off speed. Good arm action on it, whatever it was. Payoff pitch. Stays alive. Here comes a pitch. Swing and a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Left hand batter waits. And fouled off. Smoked in the left base hit. And now it rolls all the way to the wall. And he starts his afternoon off right with a double. That is it. Man in scoring position with two away. Aaron Judge up next for the Astros. And a foul ball. Well, with this many pitches thrown here in this first inning, I mean, you're giving the other team a really good look. He's going to have to find a way to get some weak contact, maybe a swing and miss, get into that dugout and hit the reset button. The pitch. Very well executed changeup right there. If he can command the fastball consistently, that's going to be an important pitch in terms of him turning this outing around. Two outs. And one in scoring position. The pitch. That misses. And the count one and two. They've got him working a little harder in this first frame than he anticipated. One, two now. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. And the right hander deals. And now it's filled up. And a pitch. 
swing and a miss, and that is that. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run homer. It's now a 2-0 ball game. Bottom of the first. Now the starting pitcher in this one. Number nine. And singing, it's not hard to see. He's been outstanding. Well, you just take a look at the numbers. ERA in the low ones. He's clearly been one of the best pitchers in the league this year. I mean, just dynamic stuff. It's electric as well as it comes through the zone. Hitters trying to figure out what he's doing. So hard to think Leader. with. Well, and the only bad shot. thing for him is that Not your ERA shot. can really only yeah. go up. It's hard to take it down Andrew lower unless there. you throw a shutout. So we'll see what he's got in this one. Tim Anderson nope. leading off here as he nope. looks at that one outside the zone. Next one misses, ball two. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. The next offering misses, and it's 3-0. Yeah, that one is in for a strike. Clearly taking all the way there in that 3-0 count. It was a cookie right down the middle. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even much to think about. Leori Garcia up to the plate. The second baseman, Leori Garcia. And that's in there for strike one. That's in there. I understand you want to try to gauge that guy's fastball, but you also have to be aggressive and ready to hit in your zone. Now you're in a tough spot. And the 0-2. One ball, two strikes. Yeah. They had a foul ball. Kicks and fires. Good eye right there. Move to first. And he's back safely. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Handcuffed him with that slider. One gone, bottom half of the first. Well, Boog, it becomes pretty difficult as a teammate when a guy's struggling like this. You don't know if you want to go up and tell him to keep swinging it or if you want to give him his space, what exactly he needs. But right now, it's clearly a struggle for him, and you're just hoping that somehow, some way, it'll click and he can get out of this as quickly as possible. Luis Robert now. Two hits in 13 at bats in a series so far. That one's in there, 0 and 1. And the pitch. And it's 1 and 1. And that's down it away. That's Next ball offering three. misses. Ball three. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. The 3-1. 
On the ground to first, could be two. Fires to second for one. Back to first for two, and that'll do it. We head to the second on the south side. It's the Astros two, and the White Sox nothing. Now it's Alex Bregman. Right now, number six on the American League home run leaderboard. And a pitch. On the ground, out to short. And he beats it. He's safe. Tough play on a nice backhand stop. Had to be perfect with the exchange and throw to get the out. But it looked like he had to dig in there a little deeper, like he was trying to get a split finger grip or something. Close play, but that little extra time on the transfer made all the difference. Here's Tyler O'Neill. In there for strike one. Oh and one. Nope. All one there. He needs a quick one, two, three this time around. Last inning through a lot of pitches. And a pitch. Ripped to short. Oh, great stop. The throw. Anderson to second to first. Not in time. Great effort there. Just a beautiful play right there to get it out. He dives to make the stop. Then a nice feed from his knees. Knew he didn't have time to get up and make that throw. The throw beats the runner. That's that internal clock working. Here's the former MVP, Jose Altuve. Three for 11 in the series coming in. First offering misses the mark. And here it comes. A swing and a miss, and that's strike one. Daryl Parker assigned to umpiring duty behind home plate. And Boog, with DP, it's sort of a coin flip on those borderline corner pitches. Doesn't really favor one side of the plate more than the other. Sometimes you'll get a little extra of the plate, and sometimes you won't. It does seem like he evens it out over the course of a game, though. Next offering is in for a strike. Fans don't really understand the familiarity and relationship players and coaches have with umpires. I mean, you see these guys a lot. Yeah, Boog, these guys are all out there trying to do their best and perform at a high level. So when you respect that, I think over time, you can develop a relationship with some of these guys. Really good take, especially with two strikes. And the next pitch is way outside. So here we go. Base runner at first could be running on the pitch. He's got good enough speed to steal the bag to get in scoring position, even if it's a swing and miss at the plate. At the belt and fires. Little bouncer out in front of the plate. Over to Anderson. Over to first. That's two. Nicely done. One, six, three, and that will end the inning. Now to the bottom of the second. It's the Astros two and the White Sox nothing. Bottom of the second. Now the left fielder, Aloy Jimenez. Leading off for the White Sox, the left fielder, Aloy. Why to kick the pitch? Swing and a miss. Strike one. I guess you throw it that hard, you can get away with locations like that right down the middle. But I still think it's a dangerous pitch. Don't want to do it again. That one not ball, close. One, one ball, one strike. And this is inside. 
The 2-1. That one missed. And the righty deals. And there's ball four. Perfect. And he reluctantly takes his walk. AJ Pollock at the dish. The right field. AJ Pollock. In there, and it's 0-1. There was a high-velocity fastball in the zone. I think a little frustration from walking the previous hitter. He's got good stuff. Pitch inside the zone and trust it. Jimenez on at first. Nobody out. Comes up empty on the swing. 0-2 now. Well, you got the hitter already chasing that nasty slider. If you're on the mound, you just want to expand the zone right now. Get a swing and miss and get through this at bat. And a swing and a miss. That's one out in the bottom of the second. Oh, that's a curveball that people like to describe as a that hammer is. or Uncle Charlie, and you can see why. Yes, it's not a looping slow curve. Run. He throws it hard, and it gets plenty of bite on the end. Yasmani Grandal steps to the plate for the White Sox. Good defender. He's been inconsistent offensively. First pitch just misses. Ball one, no strike. That one, a triple digits. Good pitch down around the knees. You want to be there all game. In a park like this, a pop-up sometimes will carry out. Righty delivers. Swing and a miss. That is strike two. Kicks and deals. That's down and in. On the ground, right side. That one sizzling on its way through to the outfield. They get it in quickly. So first and second, now one out. Got the top of the ball a little bit, but not much. That was hit pretty hard through the infield. So I think he'll be happy with that swing. Definitely generated some good bat speed. And you can feel this crowd waking up a bit here as the guys are starting to make some noise with their bats. Yohan Moncada with a chance to hit. And that one pulled foul. The next pitch misses. Ball one. I got one ball, one strike. Two on, one out. Swing and a miss. Blew it by him at 99. One out. Runners at first and second. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there's two away. Well, that split caught a lot of the zone. Definitely a hittable pitch, but coming off the fastball to pitch before, it's kind of tough to recognize. You notice there's something different about it. He threw it with the same arm action, same release point, and he left it up. But the movement and the change of speeds, that was enough to do the job. Jose Abreu up to hit. First offering misses badly for ball one. pitch swing and a miss and the count is one and one that was straight queso right there
The pitch. And a count one and two. Righty to the plate. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. On to the third inning. Here's the Astros leadoff man. Number 56. The center fielder. Number 56. A wind and a pitch. Swing and a miss. Oh, and he lost the handle on that one. Now the 0-1. In the air, right field. Pollock makes the grab. One down. Now that designated hitter. One. And now it's Juan Soto. Big time power. He's third in the AL in home runs. He's a guy who does it all. With the lack of contact in today's game, this guy hits for contact, so he delivers average, but there's on base and slugging too. Swings through that one. 0 oh and 1. Early in the count, you have to be real careful because of that power, but then. If this hitter gets a strike or two on him, he's still very comfortable. And because he has the ability to get the barrel to the baseball, he's a threat deep into the count as well. Next offering is in for a strike. And yeah, the pitch is outside, ball one. One down, base is empty. Yeah, the one two misses to even the count. Left hand hitter waits. Not even close there. Full count now. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three hole hitter coming up if he's walked. In the air to left down the line. Jimenez. Long run on his horse. Nice grab on the run. Out. Number two. Now batter. Number ten. Next to hit, number ten. Great speed and great power. A great athlete, quite simply. When you have a real athletic player and who's able to do the baseball mechanical things really well, look out because the sky's the limit on that potential. Two down, nobody on. That's in there. And a count one and one. Swing and a miss. And the count one and two. Two outs. And that just misses. That one inside, and now three and two. Here's a rocket out to left. Leaping try, but it's off his glove. Throws to second, but he's in there easily. Drove that ball nicely, put a great swing on it, and it jumped off his back. Kind of put it all together there, and he's rewarded with the double. Diego Corona up next for the Astros. Corona, very used to hitting in spots like this. Right now second in the AL in RBIs. The strategy of winning a ball game when you can make that pitcher work a little more, expose himself by throwing pitches.
that could be the key to winning perhaps later on. So good job of extending this inning, getting a knock with two outs to bring the number four hole hitter up. Perhaps not quite ready to hit. First two pitches by him for a couple of strikes. Now back is against the wall. He's going to have to figure something out and figure it out quickly. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Runner at second. Two down. Next one misses. Now one and two. Pretty standard high O2 fastball right there. If you're smart, you'll look for something down in the zone, but not. Oh, that's a strikeout, and that'll do it for the inning. One left for Houston. They're up two nothing. Set for the bottom of the third. Now it's the DH. Danny Mendy. Leading off for the White Sox, the designated hitter. And the right hander back to work. There's the strike. That was absolute gas. Triple digits on the gun. It's just a different experience as a hitter watching that go by. The 0 1 is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. Here comes a pitch. In for a strike. Now 1 and 2. The wind of the pitch. Way upstairs. And yeah, that's ball 2. And he deals. Mendick checks his swing. Now an appeal to first. Did not go. The wind of the pitch. Lifted in the air, right field. Judge makes the grab. And there's one down. Now battle. Not shortstop. Tim Anderson. Back to the top of the lineup. Now it's the shortstop, Tim Anderson. Walked to open the ball game. And yeah, the first offering is not close. Swing and a miss. Strike one. And the right hander deals. Swings and misses. And that is strike two. The pitch. Swing and a miss. And he got him. Two away. Just beautiful placement of the splitter right there. Exactly where you want it with two strikes to get that swing and miss. And he's worked very hard to be able to command that pitch. It's a tough pitch to get a grip on, but he's one of the best at throwing it where he wants to. Now the number two hitter, Leori Garcia. 0 for 1, he struck out swinging last time. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Left-hand batter waits. Strike two. This batter has to understand his job is to get on base however he can. If he gets hit by a pitch, if he walks, maybe even singles. But you want to get the heart of the order up to the plate. The next offering misses. And that's ball one. And now two and two. Great job of laying off those pitches down in the zone to even the count up at two and two. Such a better feeling for the hitter. Two and two. Just misses the mark outside the zone. Wow, that's a tough pitch to lay off. And here it comes. And that one is lifted in the air. O'Neill makes the catch, and that'll do it. One, two, three, go the White Sox. They trail it here, two nothing.
here on the south side as we go to the top of the fourth. Here's a speed threat, number 30. Number 30. And a pitch. Off the mark there. And that's ball one. It's good speed at the top of the order here. You want to get it on, see if you can get a stolen base, maybe get around the bases and pick up a run. That misses, and it's 2-0. and oh. Looks like he's being a little cautious with him in this at bat after doubling the first time up. Doesn't want to make another mistake. The pitch. That's in for a strike. Right-hander kicks deals. Popped up on the left side of the infield. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. Here comes Aaron Judge. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. The pitch. That's off the mark. One and two to count. The why to kick the pitch. Swag and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Two outs, base is empty. So next up for Houston, Alex Bregman. They say it went. And a pitch. Yeah, there's the strike. Stays alive. And he gets Bregman. And the Astros put down in order. Astros go down 1-2-3 as they're unable to add to their 2-0 lead. Back here at the ballpark, John Chambi and Chris Singleton with you. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, Luis Robert. The center fielder. Luis Robert. And a pitch. Just oh, missed. Right. He's been pitching well, but we'll see what kind of adjustment the hitters make this second time through the order. We'll know hey. if he's got really good stuff in this one or not. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. One and two. I think he was sitting off speed there. pitch and a swing and a miss and one gone that's a pretty nasty pitch right there I'd call it a power curveball in the 80s it's got so much spin on it and you really don't have a lot of time to sit back and watch what it's going to do before you have to commit it was a good one for the swinging strikeout Aloy Jimenez now first pitch doesn't find the zone
Yeah, that's downstairs and outside. Two will count. Great hitter at the dish. If you're going to miss, you've got to miss outside the zone. You miss inside the strike zone, you'll be asking the umpire for a new baseball. Swing and a line drive caught. The right fielder, number 12, A.J. So up next for Pollock. Chicago, A.J. Pollock. And that's in there for strike one. Not sure if he could be in more of a groove. Looks really relaxed. He's retired seven straight. This guy's feeling it right now. Next pitch is outside. You want to be patient here. Try to work a walk if you can. You've got a big power bat behind you in the on-deck circle. And with two outs, one swing can put you right back in this ballgame. Next pitch inside. Two and one. A little out front there as he swings through it. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Down in order go the White Sox. They're still down. It's 2 zip. Back at Guaranteed Rate Field. We go to the top of the fifth. Digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Tyler O'Neill. Pretty amazing athlete this guy is. Power and speed, quite a threat. I mean, you're talking about someone that could steal your bag and go deep. Bo Jackson, anyone? He's like Mike Trout. You figure whatever you put in his hand, whether it's a bat, whether it's a golf club, whether it's a basketball, he can do it and get it done. And a rare talent, so much fun to watch. Next offering is in for a strike. Righty delivers. And a foul ball. He stays alive. The one two. And there's a ball. That's out to center field. Makes the grab on the run. And there's one away. Now back. Second baseman. Manager out of the dugout, and he's going to make a change. Michael Kopech won't go any further, and as he heads off, we'll step aside for a minute. Back with the new pitcher after this break. White Sox going with a new arm, Ronaldo Lopez. He's into the game with the bases empty. Well, at this point of the ball game, we're talking about middle innings and the little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. We'll say Altuve up to hit here. In there for strike one. There it was. Oh, oh, here it is. Hit it. He gets a take. Gets ahead in the count. The 0 2. And ball one. One and two now. Altuve waits. Swing and a high fly ball down the right field line. Pollock makes the catch. And there's two down. Now batting. 
number 56. So the lineup flips over. And now here is number 56. First pitch, and he just misses. Righty to the plate. There's the strike. Right-handed reliever. Swings and misses. And a count one and two. Kicks and deals. Out to center. And that's the inning. Astros are down quietly, but they're on top 2 nothing. And welcome back. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Yasmani Grandal up to hit. Well, these fans definitely want to get involved in the game. All it's going to take is to get the leadoff man or even a base runner on. Here comes a pitch. And that one hit to first. And he picks it up in foul territory. And the righty deals. That's outside. That one finds the corner. One and two. One and two. The wind and the pitch. And another ball. Now all even up. Hard hit to third. Dives, but it kicks off his glove. No throw, and they don't get the out. Now batting. Third baseman, Yoan Moncada. Yoan Moncada steps to the plate for the White Sox. Struck out swinging his first time. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Grandal gets his lead at first with nobody out. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, you can't really adjust your game plan for that last pitch. Guy hasn't thrown it very much. you got to focus on the stuff that he's throwing up there most of the time. Tap back to the mound. Slings to second. How about that double play? Now that the first baseman, Jose Abreu. And now the first baseman, Jose Abreu. His first at bat was a strikeout. That one's in there on one. Oh, he's got to be pretty proud of this outing so far. Sometimes guys cower coming into a ballpark like this, but he is attacked hitters. Pitching on the road like this is very impressive. This has been a treat to watch. Hit hard, base hit. So a two out knock keeps the inning alive. We all saw his hit hard, but how hard was it, Singy? StatCast is here with the answer. Yeah, Boog, it says the exit velo was 113 miles per hour, and it looked every bit of it, didn't it? I mean, just an impressive swing of the bat, and clearly he saw it out of the pitcher's hand no problem. And now Danny Mendick. And yeah, he swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. Comes up empty. That's strike two. Ahead 0-2 in the count. Sure, you've got four pitches you can work with, but throw something you can command and get this at bat over with as quickly as possible. Oh. 
Next pitch way upstairs. Got him. That ends the inning. So a man left for the White Sox, and they're down 2 nothing. Top six, and now the DH, Juan Soto. The designated hitter, Juan Soto. Lopez, back to work. This one high in the air to left center. Jimenez moving under it. Drops into the glove. And there's one down. Now batting. Number 10. Now here's the switch hitting power threat. Number 10. Chris, baseball today, so many strikeouts, and they are available to pitchers. But this is a guy that puts the bat on the ball and is kind of different from the players that we see day in, day out. The wind of the pitch. And a foul ball left side. Yeah, his swing is so good. It's in the zone a long time. He gets the barrel to it a lot, and that produces more base hits. Next offering is foul back. The wind of the pitch. Stays alive. Here's the 0-2. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Next offering misses. It's a ball and two strikes. When you look at the elite teams in the game right now, there is going to be the slug, no question about it. But the really good offensive teams combine slug with more contact, with less swing and miss. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. Leaping, can't haul it in. In safely with a double, his second of the day. Well, this one started with a bad jump, a bad read off of the bat. He ends up having to try to leap out of desperation, can't come down with it, and it turned into extra bases. At the plate is the Astros catcher, Diego Corona. His homer earlier is responsible for the only runs they've scored in this one. Yeah, forget small ball. They're kind of living and dying by the long ball so far in this one. Brother takes off. Pitch in for a strike. Throw to third. Save. That wasn't close. Well, maybe he thought he should have gone for a triple instead of a double and just decided, I'm going to take third this way. Definitely using his legs to his advantage right here. Foul off left side. Corona tries to hold up, appeal to first, and he held back according to Ricky Holiday. One away with a runner at third. And a ball in two strikes. To the right side. Over to Abreu. Now two away as they get a run across. Now batting, number 30. Two outs, base is empty. And next to hit for Houston, number 30. First offering, misses the mark. Fouled off to the right. Mm -hmm. 
Next offering is in for a strike. The pitch. That's ball two. I got to count two and two. On the ground to third. Fair ball. Around first, heading for two. The throw into second. Not in time. He's got a double. Just found a way to slap that ball down the third baseline. That's really excellent back control. And it kind of goes back to all those drills you see hitters do off the tee where it's placed in different spots. That was just nice. Now it's the right fielder, Aaron Judge. This guy is one of the best athletes in the sport. And Judge spoils that one. Number 30 on its second with two down. That one drifts inside. At the belt and fires. Going to count one and two. Look, it looked like that curveball backed up on him. And although it's a mistake, it works out really good for the pitcher. The hitters timed it up, expects it to be to a certain spot, and it just doesn't get there. The one, two. Popped up first base side. Garcia under it. Squeezes it. And that will end the inning. So they pick up a run on two hits. No errors and a man left. Top of the order due up in the home half of the six. It's the Astros three and the White Sox nothing. Welcome back. Bottom of the six. And the batter will be the shortstop, Tim Anderson. For the White Sox, the shortstop, Tim Anderson. And the right hander back to work. That one's in there. That's strike one. And it really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Pitch misses there, and it's one and two. Fought off foul. One and two here. And down on strikes. And that's one out as they get the leadoff hitter in the sixth. That's about as nasty of a splitter as you'll come across, especially in terms of movement. I mean, that thing tumbles out of his hand and just drops off the table at the last moment. If he keeps it down, it's just so tough to put wood on. Leori Garcia steps to the plate for the White Sox. Swings through that one. 0 and 1. No, no base hits in the series for him so far, and it's clearly been a rough one. You just hope he's not pressing too hard because that just compounds things. It makes the slump even longer. Never seems to help. Never helped me. Next offering is in for a strike. Good eye right there. Got him looking. And now two gone. Passed with one, two, and three to start this inning, but no trouble so far. I'm sure he'd love to strike out the side here. Make a little statement, but you got to be composed in this spot. Focus on getting this next guy. You got two good outs. Want to get the third one and avoid the middle of that lineup coming up with a base runner. Could become dangerous. 
And now it's Luis Robert. No, that's Next pitch downstairs. Ball one. Two down, nobody on. Swing and a miss at 99 miles an hour. And the right hander deals. Swing and a miss as he was late. Just not able to catch up to that velocity. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. The big right, he strikes out. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Kendall Graveman. This is appearance number 65. Graveman. Top of inning number seven. And now it's Alex Bregman. He got for the Astros. The third baseman. Alex Bregman. And here it comes. That's a strike. That's strike one. Some guys are just more confident if they can track that first pitch out of the hand of the pitcher. They don't care if they fall behind 0-1. You'll want ball one there. Here's a one one on the ground to short. Anderson handles the chance, tosses to first. That's the first out, the top of the seventh. The batter, the left fielder, Tyler O'Neill. So digging in, Tyler O'Neill. With this kind of lead, he can swing freely, try to hit the ball out of the park, do what he loves to do. Swing and a high fly ball, pretty well struck, right field. That's back there, on its way. Turning, looking, and that one is gone. Tyler O'Neill goes the other way. His 21st of the year, and they boost their lead. It's 4 0. Always scary for a pitcher when a guy can take a fastball down the middle and hit it to the opposite field. No holes in a swing like that, and that time that ball was hit hard. Jose Altuve now at the plate. Now batting second baseman, Jose Altuve. And that one got a piece of him. The no, biggest concern other than injury after a moment like that is just how the pitcher will respond. You know, sometimes a guy will lose confidence in a pitch when he's hit somebody. So the batting order turns over. Here's the center fielder, number 56. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Movement in the bullpen. Joe Kelly getting loose out there. Throw over to first. Altuve back safely. The 1-0. That's a strike. The one one. And it's fouled away. Altuve leads off first with one away. And that one almost got him.
The other way. That's a hit. They fired in quickly. So it's first and second with only one away. Gotta love the resiliency he showed in that at bat, battling with two strikes. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages, working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Here's Juan Soto. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Runners at first and second with one gone. The next pitch misses, and that's ball two. Tough spot right here. A couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. 2-0. Ball three. And it's ball four. He missed down low. Four pitches. That's an easy walk, man. He could have walked me right there, boo. The last one wasn't even close. Number 10. Number 10 digs in now. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Always tough to turn two on a speedster like this. It's even harder with him coming out of the left-handed batter's box. You really need something to hit hard on the ground that they can handle to turn two quickly. All loaded up. Dangerous hitter at the plate. There's a sinker at the knees for a strike. Part of the order coming through now, and with one home run already in this inning, they're definitely looking to do some more damage. Going two now. Stays alive. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Tried to hold up on the 0-2. Now a look down to third. And he held back, according to Ricky Halliday. And now the count is even. Kicks and fires. Line drive, caught! The tag gets him, and it's a double play to end the inning. One more for the Astros, and it comes on this solo homer. It's now a 4-0 ball game. Back here on the south side, set for the last half of the seventh. Here's the cleanup hitter for the Sox, Aloy Jimenez. The pitch. Misses inside. And that is ball one. And he deals. Swing and a miss as he was late that time. They've got a potent lineup. And when you think about teams capable of rallying from this kind of deficit, they're right at the top of the list. And a pitch. There's a strike. But why the kick the pitch? Way inside, gets out of the way. Swings through that one, it's a strikeout. And there's one down. And up next for Chicago, A.J. Pollock. 
the right fielder, number 12. 99 pitches, AJ. about to throw his 100th here in the seventh Long inning. Run. This is where you really start looking for any signs of fatigue. First pitch, well, not close. Right, he delivers. The other way, and he beats the shift. Now batting. Catcher. One gone runner at first. Yasmani Grandal, the next to hit. In there, and it's 0-1. Now, these guys definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap, but, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. Next one misses, and now it's even one and one. Way out front for strike two. The pitch. And down on strikes he goes. Two out. Well, he throws him with a great fastball right on the corner. It's kind of like bowling when you think the ball's going to get into the gutter and somehow it just hangs onto that edge and knocks down a pin. Well, he got the outside corner of the plate and got that called third strike. Man at first, and now Yohan Moncada. High in the air, out to right. Judge makes the catch, and that'll do it. The White Sox leave one. They trail it here, 4 nothing. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Joe Kelly. He pitched yesterday, and we'll see him once again. Kelly. New inning getting started. Here's the power hitting catcher, Diego Corona. This guy, one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. And the pitch. Good eye right there. Really good athlete. And many times we talk about, you know, the feet of infielders. This catcher as well, really quick feet. He's able to recognize the pitch, see the trajectory, and get into a spot where he can block those balls and keep them from going to the backstop. Next one in the dirt. And a pitch. Check swing, but he went too far. That's strike one. Really impressive with the way he frames, the way that he sets it up, because sometimes those pitches are off the plate, but because he sets up and presents it so well, he still strikes for his pitcher. In the air, right field, pretty well struck. Way back. And it's gone. He leaves the yard to right, and they add a run. It's five zip. Knew what pitch he wanted to hit, spit on some other pitches in this at bat, was very patient, and it paid off. Number 30 will hit next. The batter, number 30. In there for strike one. Yo one. And that's outside. Activity in the bullpen. Aaron Bummer preparing to come on if needed.
The pitch. Ball out. Just missed. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the 3-1 count. The 3-1. And he walked him. His ability to draw walks has been something that's been part of his career since day one. So a man aboard, Aaron Judge at the plate. Good contact guy, good defender. First pitch, and he just misses. There's the strike. The 1-1. One, one. That clips the corner. The one two swings and misses and that's the first out third time he struck out in this one and definitely an individual performance you want to flush he just hasn't looked very comfortable up there just one of those days but when you're still winning the ball game at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that W new pitcher now Kyle Crick and we'll see how he performs in this situation with his team down big. Down the third baseman, Alex Bregman, one for three. And that's in there for strike one. Number 30, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. Next pitch misses, and a count even one and one. Right-hander kicks, deals in the dirt. And an excellent job keeping it right there. Kicks and deals. Popped up. Garcia under this one. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. And there are two down. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. Man at first. And now Tyler O'Neill. Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. He's so solid calms the heart rate of the pitcher and the manager when the ball goes up in the air. You just automatically assume that it's an out every time it's hit in the air. Runner. Here comes the pitch. Runner breaks for second. Strike in there. Safe at second, and that was not close. Clearly not content with the lead they're working with right now, and I like that. I don't think you can get comfortable with a five-run lead in today's game, and now they've got a good chance of adding on. Swings and misses. That's strike two. There's one guy that I can think about, Boog, who started as a third baseman, Alex Gordon, and then became an elite perennial gold glover out in left field for the Kansas City Royals. This one's into the outfield. Could be extra bases. 
The run comes in to score from second, and it's now a six-run lead. And in its second with an RBI double. Nice double right there. Loud contact coming off the bat. Didn't get enough air under to drive it out of here, but you'll take that swing and that result every time. Man at second here with two away. Here's the second baseman, Jose Altuve. And first offering is fouled off. The next offering misses, and it's a ball to strike. Runner leads away at second. Tapped at the plate, but it's a foul ball. Man on second, two down. That one missed. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Inning over, and it could have been worse. Last half of the eighth coming up. It's the Astros six and the White Sox nothing. Ready for the bottom of the eighth. Now at the plate, Jose Abreu. Leading off for the White Sox, the first baseman, Jose Abreu. Here comes a pitch. Just off the inside edge. Activity in the Houston bullpen. Ryan Stanek getting ready to go. Sulcer getting loose as well. Next offering upstairs. Swing and a ball ripped out towards right center field. That'll touch down for a hit. Around first and hustling for second. In safely. It's a double at his second hit. Well, when you fall behind in the count, you've got to come into the zone, and then guys have a better chance of hitting the ball hard like he did right there. Here's the White Sox DH, Danny Mendick. Now back. The designated hitter, Danny. Pitch misses inside, and it's one to know. If you're going to get something going, this is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look over the shoulder and say, I'm just going to keep the line moving. Don't try to do too much. Righty to the plate. And that one missing low. 2-0. And the righty deals. Hit in the air, right field. Judge is under it. He makes the grab. Runner tagging for third. And he makes it up to third with one away. The batter number seven. Shortstop. Tim. Back to the top of the White Sox lineup. Here's Tim Anderson. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Runner on at third, one gone. The 0-1 is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. And the right hater deals. So a foul ball makes it one and two.
and here it comes. Next offering popped in the air, right field. And they take care of Anderson for the out. Runner tags for home. The throws offline. He's saved. It's 6 1. And now it's the switch hitting second baseman, Leori Garcia. Well, they've kept him pretty quiet in this series. Still doesn't have a knock. I know you want to get that first knock out of the way. Maybe more will come. But nope. you got to give some credit to the pitching staff. They've had a great plan against him. He didn't want to give up that run, but he did. Got the fly ball, sack fly out. Now it's time to attack these other guys. Get your team back in the dugout. Aye. Next offering is in for a strike. And a pitch. They say it went. The wind of the pitch. And there's a foul ball. Next pitch has popped up. Number 30 should have this one. Makes the catch inning over. Ninth inning coming up. It's the Astros six and the White Sox one. We're back. It's the top of the ninth. And there's a new pitcher on the mound. Aaron Bummer. On for his 20th appearance of the year. Bummer. All set for the start of the inning. Now here is number 56. Leading off for Houston, the center fielder, number 56. The pitch. Strike on the outside corner, and that is strike one. Next offering is outside. Bomber deals. And that misses off the outside edge. And now the lefty. And now it's even up. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. The 3 2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. Man, that's a tough one to take on the full count, but I guess he saw it really well. It's a really nice plate appearance. Juan Soto now. He swings and fouls one off. Runner, Left runner, hand runner. batter waits. Here's the pitch. Run around the goal. Tag. Save. Grandal's throw not in time. No outs. Runner on second. Bounce to the right. Garcia picks it up to first. Now one gone in the ninth. Deceptive slider right there. Stayed in the tunnel a long time. Got that hitter out front. Rolled over it. Put it on the ground. Number 10. So up next, number 10. Singh, you talk about a guy that has all the skills the range is really good, but the arm just stands out, and he makes all the plays. Bounced up the middle. Base hit and a run in to score. Right there, he does a great job of staying in the big part of the field. Man, there are a lot of hits there. Diego Corona. And 
And here now is the Astros cleanup hitter, Diego Corona. He's provided a couple of memorable moments already today. Yeah, Boo, two impactful home runs. And the second one came in the eighth inning. This guy's swinging a red hot bat in this one. Founding ball here, rolls foul. This is one of those situations the infielders have to pre-plan and understand that the ball's got to be hit extremely hard right at them if they're going to have a chance to go for a double play. The pitch. Foul ball. Pickoff throw, and he's back in there. The 0 2. Line drive, base hit. Throw into third. And the throw's offline, safe at third. Two consecutive base hits for these guys here. Nice job going the opposite way with it. Letting the ball travel and not allowing the barrel to hook around the ball. It's so frustrating when you see a good pitch and your hands roll over. It was on the outside part of the plate, and he approached it perfectly. And now, number 30. That one's in there, 0-1. Number 10, the runner at third. Number 22, over at first with one away. Next pitch is outside. One and one. Two on, one out. Swings through that one. Knowing that the pitcher wants a ground ball double play opportunity here, you've got to lay off pitches down in the zone. Right there, swinging at that pitch, that's a no-no. Bummer. Keeping him close. Lefty out of the stretch. Runners at first and third. In the air, center field. Robert drifts towards it. Makes the catch. Runner tags from third. He's in on the sack fly, and they're pulling away up by seven now. The batter, the right fielder, Aaron Judge. Here is Aaron Judge, a guy who makes an impact not just at the plate, but also in the field. Pickoff move to first, and he's back in safely. First offering misses badly for ball one. And he deals. And there's the strike. He's had a tough day at the plate. Three strikeouts already. It's hard not to think negative, but you got to find a way to somehow center up the baseball and put it in play. And a pitch. Judge rips that one. And that one pulled down by Jimenez. And that is that. Heart of the order, 3-4-5 will get their shot in the bottom of the ninth. It's the Astros 8 and the White Sox 1. Righty reliever out of the pen, Ryan Stanek. And he's got a nice lead to work with. Ryan Stanek. Back here at the ballpark, we head to the bottom of the ninth. Now, Luis Robert. Leading up for the White Sox, the center fielder, Luis Robert. And a pitch. That's in there, and it's 0-1. 0-1. Righty delivers. And a pop-up, right side, foul territory. Judge racing over to make the catch. Now batting, left fielder, Malloy. Here's Aloy Jimenez. Jimenez. 
And he swings and misses, and it's nothing in warm. Love to see it. Power versus power right there. The pitch. Top of the zone for a strike. 0-2. Oh now, just a cement mixer slider right there. It's a great pitch to hit if you can recognize it early and jump on it. And the 0-2. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. And they're down to their last out. First strikeout for him in this the one. Right that splitter is maybe the go-to pitch when he's looking for a swing and miss like that. He throws it quite a bit, and that's a good example of the effect it can have on a hitter. And now the right fielder, A.J. Pollock. Really good piece of hitting last time going to the opposite field. First offering misses the mark. And yeah, that's downstairs and outside. 2 0 count to a guy with this much pop at the dish. You better expect him to be turning on something. It's going to either get hit hard to the pull side or the fans better look out in the stands. Two outs. I got three and And that's ball Whoa. four. It's tough after falling behind a hitter, two balls and no strikes, but now at least he gets now a fresh batter. start against Catcher. a new batter, but yes, he needs to get back into the strike Run zone and ball. start pitching with conviction. Grandal in the box now. No balls and a strike. Pollock off of first with two away. And he's down 0-2 oh, as he swings right. through it. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Well, the goal when you go on the road is to at least play 500 ball. Well, they've been winning series. They win this one here. And you got yourself a little bit of breathing room, but you want to keep the same mindset. Let's go into the next place and let's take that series again. And this one finishes with a final of eight to one for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Chomby. Thanks for joining us. Fans, our final line score this afternoon. First for the victorious Astros, eight runs on 12 hits. No errors, they left nine runners on base. For the White Sox, one run, five hits. No errors, they left six men on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and 12 minutes. Our paid attendance at Guaranteed Rate Field this afternoon 40,615. The White Sox thank you for attending and encourage you to buckle up and drive home safely. Yeah, yeah.